then set us up to go live. Alrighty, so we're um, off with a bang or starting with a bang. Um, this is the first QGIS Open Day of 2022. Welcome everyone who's joining us. Um, in the room with me, I have a whole bunch of cool people that I would like to introduce and then we'll just get into making a simple map um, that we can then publish on the OSGS stack. Um, the OSGS stack, I'm sure if you've been following QGIS Open Day for the last couple of months, you'll see a bit of the videos on development, how it's coming about. It's not quite ready for mainline production, but there are some amazing new features and things that we would like to show. So um, we've got two of our absolutely awesome interns who have been playing with um, uploading um, web maps, etc. So in the room with us today, we have Tim. Hi, Tim. Hi. <laughs> we also have... Okay, um, Hi. <laughs> yes, our brand new QGIS heart mugs. Thanks, Raymond, for making those. They're amazing. Um, next, we have Victoria. Hi, Victoria. Hi. Um, then in the room with that, we have Thiasha. Hi. And lastly, we have Lisejo. Hi, everyone. Awesome. So um, we're going to go jump straight in because um, of time. And we're going to go over to Thiasha, who's going to show us how to make a simple tourism map in QGIS. Um, over to you, Thiasha. Awesome. Okay. Let me start by sharing my screen. Hello, everyone in the okay, comments. So you're saying hi. Good to hear from you. Um, so go we're going to start by opening up our templates, and we're going to create a new geo package. Um, so we're going to create database and we're going to call it by the name of the place that we chose for our tourism map and you can choose any geometry that you want because that doesn't matter for your geo package. Okay. We can just name. So we chose to use um, a place in Rome called Villa Borges. So we're going to open up a street map and find um, find it on there. I've copied the coordinates just so that I don't have to manually search for it. Um, just by the way, you're sharing by the Asha. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't seem to want to automatically go there, so I'll just manually uh, look for it. Because you're not in 4326, the dreaded 4. <laughs> Um, so we're going to change our coordinate reference system um, for the project and then we're going to paste that in again. Thanks. Too much. Hopefully now with the travel bans gone, we can actually travel and go and see Rome and all these amazing places we've been making maps for. Ah, there it is, okay. So once we've got our area sort of in the center of our map canvas, we want to open up um, Quick OSM. If you don't have it installed, you can just go to your plugins and install it from there. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is go to our map presets. Um, the map presets are really nice because they it, um, it loads the buildings and the roads layer for you. All you have to do is to click Canvas Extend and run it. Um, so the layers that we're going to put into our map are just the tourist attractions. We're not going to be working with accommodation and restaurants and all of that stuff because the area we chose is a public park that's engulfed in forest and it's basically just things to do. Um, and we don't know if the park has Wi-Fi. So anywhere else, if you are traveling in that area, you might be able to use your phone to find accommodation and places to eat and things to do but in the park you might not be able to which is why we've chosen the layers that we have 
So we're going to start while we're in quick OSM, um, looking for the layers that we need. And the first one is the part itself. The next one is the forest. It's taking its time. While you're um, loading the layers there, Yasha, I think if for anyone who hasn't seen the new Quick OSM um, sort of plugin, First of all, where have you been? And uh, second of all, I think that she's doing a great job of showing how easy it is to use. And, um, you know, there are a whole bunch of presets. And when you search things, you can easily find them. They're easily downloadable. Um, so definitely go ahead and check it out. Um, I remember last open day, um, Etienne was showing us this, just this. And he would really like some suggestions for any other presets other than the urban one, which will do your buildings and your roads. So if you do have any presets, get in hold, get a hold of him, and you can uh, talk about you know what presets would be nice for the quick OSM. Okay, um, I just see now that there is a question in the live chat. Um, yes, all of our YouTube videos that are live streamed are automatically available to watch offline um, whenever you need to. So they are on the um, QGIS Open Day YouTube channel. So please feel free to go and watch them anytime. Okay. So that was the last layer that we're getting from Quick OSM. Um, so basically, as you can see here, that for certain layers, there are polygon. Um, there's a polygon layer and a point layer for the same thing, um, and they're not always on the same places. So you can't just delete one and assume the places are still going to be there. Um, I use the polygon said Troy tool to create um, points in the middle of the polygons and then I just merged the two layers. It took me a really long time so I'm not going to show you how to do it now because of the time constraints um, but there are a few tutorials online. Um, after this what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable my open street maps and then and then copy all of my layers to my geo package so it's all in the same place um this also takes a really long while to do every time it goes through yeah so i've got a second version where i've pulled everything back out of my geo package and it looks like this once i've also merged my the points with the centroid polygon tool. Um, awesome. From here, um, I create, I renamed all my layers um, just so they were a bit easier to work with. And I created a group. You can see here in the top here, there's a little button to, to add a group called Tourism Map. Um, so it's easier for Laseho later on to upload. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to style or um, style each layer. So we can go into layer style, styling over here. Um, I use an SVG marker. Um, size monuments so that's the one that i used for monuments and then 
embed the file. And then I changed the color to black. Um, and then I created a label for each one, a single label. With the size eight, um, I left it like that. I don't have a mask on them, but I do have a background and a call out, and that's how I did my labels. Um, I do have the, the rest of them pre-saved, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, if you want to pre-save, you right-click and you go down to export and you save the layers, the save as QGIS layer style file. Um, and then to access it, you open it up here and click on it. And when you open it, you'll see that it comes out exactly the way you pre-saved it. Um, another one that I want to show you how I did was the forest. Um, so basically, I wanted to differentiate the forest from the park, not just by showing a different shade of green. For example, I'll change the path now. So I created a light green for the background, and I clicked on the little plus here, um, and I changed that to an SVG full. And then I found these cute little trees. Yeah. Um, I just made them a lot smaller. Okay. And then I made it a different green so that it stands out. Um, And then I have the park preserved as well. And the roads. Okay, so that's basically how I made it look. And then I'm going to show you guys how I digitized my walking path. Um, so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to show you how I did it. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. Um, so we're going to start by creating a new geo package layer. And then we are going to put it inside our geo package. And we're going to call it um, line, add new layer, and then we're going to click on this icon over here, and we're just going to start wherever you, you can make it sort of however you want to, or wherever you want to. For um, the tourism maps that we played around with previously, we, you know, generally we make them in a, in a nice place that we've traveled to, so we know a good path, or um, Lesejo made a really cool one on some of the Soweto um, walking tours that you can do, 
So generally with these tourism maps, if you have a bit of background, it's great um, to make a path. And obviously you can digitize it as <laughs> quickly or as, you know, um, in more detail than you need to. You could zoom in and go, you know, step by step. They show is just showing quickly how, how it's done in general. Um, yeah, so my final version is much neater than this. I'll show it to you in a second. And then you're going to left click and it'll generate for you. Um, I do have a style layer saved for it as well. So I'm just going to click on that. And that's how I did it. You can make it make it have arrows if you want it to show direction as well. Um, and then this is what it look, kind of looks like once you play around with everything and make it look exactly the way you want it to. So I was really happy with the way it came out. And then the last thing that you have to do while you're in QGIS before you open the layout is um, go to... So if you double click on it, it takes you to the layers prop the layer properties. Um, and if you click on fields, it'll bring you to this table here. Um, so if you click on the configuration and deselect or select do not expose by a WMS or do not expose by a WFS. It helps when you upload your map online, um, when you show your attributes of each layer or each area, it, the map, um, the information isn't as cluttered and as unnecessary. Um, and then the last thing to do is right click in the center of your map and copy your coordinates. Um, and then you just paste your coordinates there so that when Lesejo, and then I send it to Lesejo, and once Lesejo has it, it'll, um, he needs it to upload the map. So from here, we can open up a new map layout. So I'm just going to call it Open Day. And those two steps, are they they're important for just the OSGS stack to know where the middle of the map is, those coordinates, and then just to show the specific attributes you want in the WMS? Is that what they both do? Yes, but I don't think it's just for OSGS. I think it's for any uploading of QGIS maps mm -hmm. on, an, on an online, I think, online. Mm. Awesome. Um. So once we have our blank layout, I'm going to show you what mine looked like when it was finished. And then I'm going to show you how we created some of those elements. So this is what mine looked like when it was done. Um, and now I'm going to show you how we did it. Okay, so we started off by adding a rectangular background just because I want the color scheme of my map to match with the layout. Um, and then we're going to add our map. And I'm going to leave a bit of a border so you can see the background. Okay. And then I'm going to add another rectangle. And in the second re rectangle, that's where I'm going to add my legend and um, a bit about the place we chose to use, as well as my heading and my picture. But first, I'm going to show you how to do the legend. So you click on the Add Legend button. Okay. And you'll see everything pops up. Um, to change that, you deselect Auto Update. And you basically click on what you don't want and you click on the little red minus at the bottom. So you don't really need the park or the forest or the buildings for that matter um, to be in your legend. You just want the tourist attractions there. Um, I don't want it to say tourism map at the top. So I'm just going to delete that and then that's the legend okay and then for 
the north arrow and the scale bar, I put them together along with the coordinate reference system um, in a little box that I created. I, I really like thing. how you use the rectangles to make the um, composition. It's, it's quite a useful way of doing it. Before you've even put the map elements, you can see what it's going to look like. Very cool. Thank you. I find it's the easiest way to sort of Compose. visualize what it's going to look like. Yeah. Um, so we're going to start with the scale bar right in the center. And we want the line ticks up. And we don't need it to be so high. I think I said line ticks down here. That's why it looks like that. Okay, now it looks the way I want it to. And now we can add our north arrow in. So I know this is the default north arrow, but I really like it. I think it looks the cleanest. So that's the one I used. And then I added my text. And so basically, because we used quick OSM, um, we have to reference where we got our data from. And so I'm going to reference my coordinate system and quick OSM at the same time. So that little line, this over here, will put in the coordinate reference system for you. A useful little line of um or expression slash markdown to know because it'll automatically put in um what you need so that's pretty cool and then you've just got to play around with it until it it looks the way you want it to look i think we're going to have to decrease the fonts like six Yeah, and then you, you keep playing around with it and eventually you get the map exactly the way you want it to look. And for me, that was this way. Um, and then the last thing you do here is you export as a PDF. And you also wait for that to load. And then you also export that as an image. Okay. And now that I've done my map, I'll send everything to Lesejo. Well, I've sent everything to Lesejo already, and he will show you how to upload it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Diasha. That was Fantastic. Um, great to take us from an empty map to a great layout and how the um, project needs to be. So now through the magic of TV, um, a beautiful project folder has been created with the QGIS project in it, the geo package and the layout. Um, Thais has also saved those images, the PDF and the PNG to that folder. And we're now going to go over to Lesejo, who's going to show us how you can upload a web map using the OSGS stack and make a cool little travel blog to go with it. So over to you, Lesejo. Okay, I'm just waiting for my screen to start sharing. Awesome. There we go. We Got it. Okay, let, let me open up uh, the OSGS stack. 
and the map menu folder. Okay, now uh, on the OSGS stack, Cartusa has got a web page as a website where maps are loaded there and other projects. One of them is the QGS project and uh, it was created by Victoria and Tim from Cartosa. Inside this QGS project, that's the pro I'm going to show you the project that uh, Tiesha uh, made and the one that I uploaded. It's in QGIS Open Day. It's loading. Okay, and as you can see, it's got the three files that uh, Tiesha made, and it's very simple to upload. Just click on here and click on folder. And then I navigate to the place where I've got it saved on my machine. And it's the QG, QGIS open day folder. And if you click to upload, it will upload. You have to do it one folder up in here, but it will show all those three files. Okay, now let me open up the markdown. Not that. And through the magic of the stack, it understands you know, that is, that uh, project way, is... Um... Yeah. All right. It's just a language that makes, uh, it, that makes you be able to load up your map and other content onto the web page. Okay, it's opening now. I go to maps. And here's our open day map uh, markdown file. Okay, this is a template that's been created by Tim. And uh, it's what we normally use uh, for our maps. And uh, as you can see, the title here is Open Day Tourism for Villa Bugues. And that's what's shown on the left-hand side of my screen. And uh, it's really easy for anyone to work with Markdown in this OSGS stack. And I'll show you all that I can do here is type Welcome to Open Day and then save it to immediately update this. There's no special code really needed for this. There are some other things which are which were created by Tim and Victoria, which I will see later on some of the things that uh, we can do. It's loading. There, as you can see, that the title has changed. And uh, there's a thumbnail of the image of the map. That's the image that was exported by Tiasha. And uh, it's here. And let me show you there's a static folder that we save all our images for a map. And uh, it's over here. In the static folder, images, then you go to open day, and there's all the images that we have loaded onto the map. This is what you see here. Okay. Now let me go back to the markdown. I think it's quite brilliant how this really works Content. like a file system on someone's computer. So it's quite user friendly. Mm. 
Yes, it's very easy to use. Okay, now the next section, if I click here, it will load up the map, the map page. And you've got map uh, code that is currently being commented out. And you've got an option of user or this the direct. Now the difference between the two is that if you use map proxy, it will it makes it much easier to load up the map for the server so that uh, it doesn't have to load up the map every time it caches the first instance of when you've loaded up the map so that next time you visit the web page it will just get that uh, map from the cache and currently we're using uh, QGIS server directly and uh, these are the lines that we have to comment out in order for it to show. And we have to make sure that when you reference this uh, web map service uh, link, the name that you give your map has to be the same as the one that's been saved as in the QGIS uh, open day folder. Like it's QGIS open day, it's the same thing. Okay. And Another thing that I want to show you quick here is that the you can see the map coordinates, the bounding, the boundings, and if you click on the map, the Tesla location shows where you are. Now, if I click somewhere on an icon somewhere in the map, it will update and show a query, query result, and it will tell you what's the name of the that place is what uh, part layer, and then there's a name for villa, it's the name of the part, and then the villa book. Yes, that's the name of the room. Okay, and then if I go down on the map down, the server that we're using is we specify it as QGIS. That's Part of the template that has been built and the base map you can choose to either be true or false it just gives you an option whether to put the osm base map or not which, uh, we haven't included it yet and on the layers line uh, you just choose the layers layer that was referenced in tias's map as far as the map with all those other uh, layers in the like the path, the long fence and the museums and everything. Okay, and the zoom is 15.6 so that the map can appear nicely. And that's the date. And over here we've got metadata for category these and tags. If I maximize this is what the map looks like. And the web page is fully open. And these are the tags and the features, categories, and tags, and the method data that's in there. Okay. okay. Now, got a summary here and a tourism map of the best form by the and Tiasha. That's all the metadata for that. And then once we done with the map, the next line, that's a level two. We're heading in markdown with two hashtags. For Vinabo Guest Tourism. Yeah. And this is a short code for the preview in PDF of the map of the location. And as you can see, it's been nicely presented in PDF form, and you can zoom in and out. So that you can see everything nicely here. And yeah, you can also scroll down or scroll up across so that you can see everything on the map. Okay. And then you have to make sure that this image that you're referencing, you've saved it in your static folder. I think that you've seen it also there. I showed it before. And 
what happens is that uh, next is just a paragraph on the map about the map, and this is just normal text that you can use in markdown. Nothing, no special code required, and I can add text here. Welcome to not welcome. Doesn't make sense that one. Uh, beautiful beloved gas is a major tourist attraction in Rome. And uh, uh, let me show you here what the text, text is saying now. The same beloved gas I just added the beautiful, the way to beautiful. And I saved it, and if I refresh, it will change. This is just to show you how. That's really cool. I like how you can sort of live see how it's yeah. happening. Well, it's busy. There's some other places that are shown on the map. Some images. Okay, as you can see, yeah, it's sort of fresh. When you it. it says the beautiful Villa Bugas is a major tourist attraction in Rome. Yeah. And the next thing is the is cultural. That's a that I got from Wikipedia. And this is the markdown code for it. This is the markdown code. I will highlight it here. And next is the attribution to the source of the image in markdown code also. And that's what it looks like. Like that's something that I added in there, and if you will click on the attribution, where is it now? Just show up just now. Let me refresh it again. Nice. Agent nice. response. <laughs> always, you'll always have an internet moment when it's a live demo. Okay, let me carry on. Yeah. When it's live, yeah. Okay. There's some other images that I've uploaded here. One of them is the Museo Nazionale Etrusco, and uh, the, also the same markdown code that I used for the Institute of Japan. In the same manner, so the attribution has to be okay. There, there we go. Now, let me show you something. Yeah, go there, redirect me to the Wikipedia page. That, that's uh, licensing details of the image. I think my internet is slow. That's really cool. You know, I think, especially with using data and open things, okay. attributions are so important. Mm, interesting. Uh, uh, Bottom of the page. <laughs> yes, that's an open street map contributors and attribution. It's another short code that has been created by Tim, just so that we can add it to the bottom of. The maps. I, let me just scroll, scroll down here. It's gone. Okay, I'll, I'll show you to you now.
Let me open up the map again. Yeah, I'm still on. Okay. Problems with the internet. Yeah, that's all right. Um, that's all right. Okay, here's the page. Okay, let me scroll right down to the OSN attribution, show you what it looks like. Okay, this page includes maps, another derived data from OpenStreetMap project, which is copyright OpenStreetMap contributors. And this is the details of the contribution and how you may use the information that's on the web page. Okay, and, and same thing, this is the attribution of the one of the images done via, Mac, via markdown code and what other things that are interesting here is that you can also share your map on twitter uh, facebook and linkedin and show that you've made a cool map okay. and you can also copy the link for this map page. Okay. And I uh, just want to show you other maps that uh, have been made, other tourism maps that have been made. Yeah, Pato. I love that that functionality is built into the stack that, you know, as you make this thing, you can share things on social media. It's easy to use simple text to type up your blog. And the short codes, um, I'm sure we can ask Tim to explain a little bit more about those, but it's a really easy way to get functionality into your markdown file for each move. Yeah. This is Amy's talk. Isn't that for Budapest? Just show you a quick preview of it. Being made using the same type of markdown. Oh, what is it? The same markdown template. As you can see, there's the map. It's a quite a beautiful map of Budapest Red Group through the Budapest Castles. And this is the PDF preview for it. It's busy loading and some information about the map. And there's also images in here. Pretty much the same format that was used in our map. And this is one of the castles of the map. Some of the tourist attractions in Budapest. And there is Amy by a chain bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and he has also added the how-to of uh, how you can basically a summary of what Yasha explained in how to make the map. Mm. This is all also included in here. And uh, finally, I will show you the map that I made. Tourism map of Soweto. Okay, and here it is. Let's go through it quickly. <laughs> there, as you can see, it shows uh, some of the tourist attractions in Soweto, the Hector Peterson Museum, 
Mandela Saos, Madigzela Mandela Saos, and you know, where you can do bungee jumping there at the Soweto Towers. Same thing is the, is the same template that uh, has been created for lockdown, and uh, that's the preview. PDF preview, like the same one I showed you. I mean, that was created by Tiasha. Look just now. And some thing of icons, uh, PG icons that are used in the map. And some photos are there in the page. That's the Mandela House. That's the Hector Peterson Museum. That's the uh, United Gisela Mandela's house. And some other icons there. Show you what's what on the map. And the Soweto Snake Show House, which is a tattoo color. And the house also full of snakes there. <laughs> Brilliant. As you can see. And, uh, <laughs> and then there is uh, the Soweto Queen Towers. Here they are. And some icons of symbols that are used in the map and the open street map contribution attribution is there. And in the, I'll show you some other maps that are in there. There's a couple, I think. I think we're running low on time there, Lucy. Yeah, I think that's good. Um, yeah. to stop I think people can see how nice the maps are. Um, so I think, Tim, if you can tell us just maybe a little bit more about the magic of the stack. I think it's fantastic and I think people can see how easy it is to make, you know, just by uploading the project, you can then um, make this really cool and interactive blog map. So I'd like to talk to a little bit to you, um, Tim and Victoria, on the magic of the stack. And I would like to invite anybody who has any questions um in the live chat to please ask them and let us know what you think of this really cool project i'll, I'll let vicky um, describe the stack but i would like to ask the interns a couple of questions afterwards and also just to apologize the sechus call quality wasn't great so if you couldn't follow along um i apologize for the for the, the crackly sound but uh, hopefully you could get the, the general sense of what was going on Vicky, I'll, I'll put that diagram up there and you can talk about <laughs> the, the OSGS stack. Okay, so the OSGS is um, simply put um, a platform that combines um, the different um, GIS software that we normally we find we're using from day to day. Um, for example, I know we use QGIS a lot. We do have a QGIS desktop in there. And nowadays, we I think most have moved from using shapefiles to using um, uh, storing data in databases. So we do have the Postgres connection. So I'm just going to go step by step um, through the, uh, this, this, the services that we offer. So first of all, the from the laptop um, obvious icon on the on the screen that that's your local machine on the. Hmm, I think it's Tim is the one on the I think on my right is the one I was pointing at. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we um, obviously we connect using the nginx uh, service that. Um, through SSL for security and from Nginx as a connecting point to all other services, we have the starting from the top, the file browser service, which um, was sort of is the file system that we're using for the whole stack. As Lesejo demonstrated, he uploaded, um, he was uploading the maps and the markdown for the, for the different posts onto onto the file browser which is um be the best description i have is for windows users your file that's your file browser um where everything goes and you move around your documents 
and all that. The next interesting service is the Node-RED service, which I have used quite a lot, is we use it to make, um, it's a low code environment that you can use to build uh, flows and also um, build dashboards for displaying your data and for data analysis. That's the Node-RED service. Um, oh, you have a picture of it, Tim? Uh, no, no, uh, sorry, I don't okay. think we have time to go into each one, so maybe I was okay. about to stop myself from opening new web pages to share. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. The interest, other interesting, most commonly used is the Geo server, which is the counterpoint for the people using the Geo server or QGIS server to publish the maps onto the web. So that is also a pretty very cool service. And we have a Hugo Watcher, which is what we are using to manage our static website, the OSGS uh, website that we've been uploading um, maps onto. We also have on the next uh, sort of stack on the left, I think is the most commonly used is the Postgres and the Docker OSM that we, um, the OSM mirror is simply pulling OSM layers for an area of interest, and we store them in a post Postgres um, database. And we also have our margin service, which we have, which uh, we sync our magic, sorry, our margin projects into a Postgres database as well. We, and I think that's about it. I was highlighting the, the so those are the most common service everyone would know from the stack. And then we have the other services, which are Swagger. Metabase is a cool um, dashboard. I haven't played with it yet, but I'm looking forward to doing that. And we also have the map proxy, yeah. And the map proxy so service. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and the mosquito. And the recent addition is the watchtower that Tim added. Cool. Victoria, um, Tom, Tom Cadwin asks, why both GeoServer and QGIS server? Um, I would for that question to Tim. Tom, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm so sorry we included a non QGIS project in our stack. Um, no, but seriously, no, I think um, it just depends on what you're trying to do. In some cases, GeoServer's got some things like all the permissions framework out the box, which you just server you need to um like build you know add plugins for i think alessandro Passotti might have already shared some example authentication plugins which we probably need to integrate um, um but it, you know geoserve's got a whole huge stack of other functionality that you don't get in QGIS server so we just want to cater for both use cases and um i don't know if the safest presentation was very clear but you can actually like um, publish your maps to either backend and then with the, with the blogging sort of system we have, you can uh, just point to any WMS or, you know, web server, uh, whether it's GeoServer or QGIS server, and it will sort of work regardless. Um, mm. Cool. Um, hi, Tom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope that answers um, your question, Tom. Um, and then I think we have about four minutes left. So if there are any other questions or Tim, you wanted any other questions, then we can sign off. I just wanted to just let the, in, just explain a little bit that the presentation that you saw today is from two of our interns at our company, but, um, um, uh, Fiasha and, um, Sefu are like fresh out of university or if the Sefu is still in university, Fiasha, you finished university now, I think, hey, um, and, yes, um, I Mm -hmm. I have for, I mean, it hasn't been that long. I think it's been two months now. I I've learned so much and it's, it's, it's honestly, it's so incredible to see the different things you can do just using such similar softwares, but they're so similar, but they're all so different. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And what, like, what are the what are some of the key things that you've learned already in these two months? Sorry, Tim. I was saying, what are some of the most interesting things that you've learned already in, in these two months? Um, for me, I think learning more 
on. Um, it wasn't too difficult to learn, but um, I think it was really important and it's been really helpful since I have learned it. Because um, I never thought about ever going into like more of the coding side and even though Markdown... Just remember to unmute yourself. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we might have lost Lisa who is... I think so. I think um, he did mention... Oh, I'm still there. Sorry. There we go. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, you sound like you're okay. underwater, but... Yes, yeah. <laughs> I'll say that now. Uh, no. oh, it's very bad here on my side also. Yes, I've uh, learned quite very important uh, things, uh, interesting things uh, during my internship in the last two months, and especially some of the things that I didn't know about the uh, net make you uh, improve your net presentation, uh, uh, and uh, also learning how to, to work in Markdown and uh, Present making a web map, a web page. I think that was very cool, and uh, I also learned uh, a bit about Q QGIS plugin development and uh, using Python. So uh, yeah, that's uh, very cool. And 